refraction of light through a prism. You have learned how light gets refracted through a rectangular glass slab. For parallel refracting surfaces, as in a glass slab, the emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray. However, it is slightly displaced laterally. But the question is, how would light get refracted through a transparent prism? Consider a triangular glass prism. It has two triangular bases and three rectangular lateral surfaces. These surfaces are inclined to each other. The angle between its two lateral faces is called the angle of the prism. Let us now do an activity to study the refraction of light through a triangular glass prism. Fix a sheet of white paper on a drawing board using drawing pins. Place a glass prism on it in such a way that it rests on its triangular base. Trace the outline of the prism using a pencil. Draw a straight line PE inclined to one of the refracting surfaces, say AB, of the prism. Fix two pins, say at points P and Q, on the line PE as shown here. Look for the images of the pins fixed at P and Q through the other face AC. Fix two more pins at points R and S such that the pins at R and S and the images of the pins at P and Q lie on the same straight line. Remove the pins and the glass prism. The line PE meets the boundary of the prism at point E. Similarly, join and produce the points R and S. Let these lines meet the boundary of the prism at E and F respectively. Join E and F. Draw perpendiculars to the refracting surfaces AB and AC of the prism at points E and F respectively. Mark the angle of incidence, angle I, the angle of refraction, angle R, and the angle of emergence, angle E, as shown. Here, PE is the incident ray, EF is the refracted ray, and FS is the emergent ray. You may note that a ray of light is entering from air to glass at the first surface AB. The light ray on refraction has bent towards the normal. At the second surface AC, the light ray has entered from glass to air. Hence, it has bent away from normal. Compare the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction at each refracting surface of the prism. Is this similar to the kind of bending that occurs in a glass slab? The peculiar shape of the prism makes the emergent ray bend at an angle to the direction of the incident ray. This angle is called the angle of deviation. In this case, angle D is the angle of deviation. Dispersion of white light part 1 
you must have seen and appreciated the spectacular colors of rainbow. Have you ever thought how the white light of the sun gives us the various colors of the rainbow? To understand this, we shall first understand the diffraction through a prism. When a narrow beam of sunlight passing through a pinhole is made to fall on a triangular glass prism, we see a band of seven colors on the screen on the other side. This phenomenon of splitting of white light into its constituent seven colors on passing through a glass prism is called dispersion of light and the band of colors is known as a spectrum. The color sequence obtained on the green from its lower end is given by the famous acronym VIPCURE in which V stands for the color violet, I for indigo, B for blue, G for green, Y for yellow, O for orange and R stands for red. Aren't you wondering how we get these colors? Why these colors are arranged in this particular sequence? The answer to these questions is simple. Sunlight or the white light is a mixture of seven other colors namely violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. Each of these colors has its own characteristic wavelength and frequency. Though all these colors of light travel in vacuum or air with the same speed, their speeds in any other refracting medium are different. For example, in glass, violet color has the minimum speed, while red color has the maximum speed. Due to the difference in their speeds, the different colors of light bend through different angles with respect to the incident ray. This is the reason why the different colors emerge along different paths and become distinct, thus giving a band of distinct colors of the spectrum. Dispersion of White Light Part 2 Isaac Newton was the first to use a glass prism for obtaining the spectrum of sunlight. He further tried to split these colors using a second prism but failed. However, when he placed a second identical prism in an inverted position with respect to the first prism, so as to allow the colors to pass through it, he observed a beam of white light emerging from the other side of the second prism. This observation made Newton to conclude that sunlight is made up of seven colors. A rainbow is a natural spectrum appearing in the sky after a rain shower. It is caused by dispersion of sunlight by tiny water droplets present in the atmosphere. The water droplets act as small prisms. They refract and disperse the incident sunlight and then reflect it internally before refracting it again on coming out of the raindrop. In this way, different colors reach the observer's eye. It should also be observed that a rainbow is always formed in the direction opposite to that of the sun. Ring of light. Have you ever thought why the sky looks blue? Why the sun appears red at the time of sunrise and sunset? Why clouds appear white? This is because of the phenomenon of scattering of light. Scattering of light is the phenomenon of the change in the direction of light on striking with an obstacle like a dust particle 
water droplet, etc. or any colloidal particle. Now in order to understand, we can observe that the path of a beam of a light passing through a true solution is not visible but its path becomes visible through a colloidal solution. Where the size of particles is relatively large. The Earth's atmosphere is a heterogeneous mixture of minute particles including smoke, tiny water droplets, suspended dust particles. When beam of light strikes such fine particles, the path of beam becomes visible. This effect of light is known as Tyndall effect. The color of the scattered light depends on the size of the scattering particles. Very fine particles scatter the shorter wavelength like blue light. Activity Take a strong source of white light, two convex lenses, a glass tank, water, a cardboard with hole in center, a screen, Solid sodium thiosulfate IPO, concentrated sulfuric acid, and arrange the setup as shown here. First, take water in the tank. When light is made to fall at the focus of the convex lens L1, it provides a parallel beam of light. This beam passes through the transparent clear water in the tank. A sharp image of this hole is obtained on the screen through convex lens L2. Now, dissolve 200 grams of sodium thiosulfate hypo, in about 2 liters of clean water taken in the tank. Add about 1 to 2 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid to the water. We observe that 1. Fine microscope sulfur precipitates in water in a couple of minutes. 2. Light gets scattered from the minute colloidal sulfur particles and blue color will be observed from the three sides of the tank. 3. From the fourth side of the tank facing the circular hole, we find first the orange red color and then bright crimson red color on the screen Y. It shows that very fine particles scatter mainly blue light of smaller wavelengths and the transmitted light contains longer wavelengths. Why the color of the sky is blue? As the molecules of air and other fine particles in the atmosphere have size smaller than the wavelength of visible light. When sunlight passes through the atmosphere, the fine particles in air scatter the blue color more strongly. The scattered blue light enters our eyes. That is why a clear sky looks blue. If the earth had no atmosphere, no color of sunlight would be scattered and the sky would have looked dark during the daytime as it does at night. And very interesting to note that the sky appears dark to passengers flying at very high altitudes as at such heights the scattering is not prominent. Inger signals are red. We know that red light has the largest wavelength. When sunlight passes through Earth's atmosphere, the size of the particles responsible for scattering is much less than the wavelength of the light. Hence the red color is scattered the least and can be seen from the distance. That is why danger signals are red. Why do the clouds look white in color? The clouds are at a much lower height. They are seen due to scattering of light from lower parts of Earth's atmosphere which contains large dust particles, water droplets, ice particles, etc. As the size of particles responsible for scattering is much bigger than the wavelength of the light, 
so all wavelength are scattered equally and all equally scattered colors merge together to give us the sensation of white hence clouds generally appear white of sun at sunrise and sunset at the time of sunrise and sunset the sun is closer to the horizon the sunlight near the horizon passes through denser layers of the air and covers larger distance before reaching our eyes therefore most of the blue light gets scattered away the light that reaches our eyes is of longer wavelengths mainly orange and red out of all the colors of sunlight the color scattered least that is red color reaches our eyes hence the sun appears red both at the time of sunrise and sunset at noon time when the sun is nearly overhead the sunlight passes through the rarer layers of the air and covers shorter distance before reaching our eyes only a small amount of blue light gets scattered and most of the light of other colors reaches us as a result appears white so now you must have understood why the clear sky appears blue why the color of sun at sunrise and sunset appears red why the clouds appear white why the danger signals are red